Praise the Lord and good evening, family. Welcome to Wednesday night virtual Bible study. I pray you're having a blessed week. We are excited and grateful that you are joining us on tonight for Bible study here at Ebenezer AME Church at 7707 Allentown Road in Fort Washington, Maryland, where we are the family church serving the family of God. Our dynamic pastors are the Reverend Dr. Granger Browning Jr. and the Reverend Dr. Joanne Browning. I thank them on this evening for the opportunity to share with you one more time. And we'd like to take a moment to welcome our visitors. If you are visiting with us on tonight, do me a favor and let us know about it. Type it in the chat because we would love to connect with you and be in prayer and fellowship. Please go to our website at ebenezerame.org slash connection dash card. That's ebenezerame.org slash connection dash card. Fill out the information and someone will reach out to you in a day or so. We also invite you to join us again on Sunday. We have in-person and virtual worship services at 9 o'clock a.m. So come on out and worship with us if you're able to join us. If not, join us online. We have a good time in the Lord. So we hope to see you then. We want to also thank our pastors again for all that they do in kingdom building. We want to thank our church administrator and the office staff. We'd like to give a special word of thanks to our multimedia ministry who worked so hard at this and our social media team, security, and as I always say, anybody else who is here in the room that makes it happen. We thank you on this evening. So we're going to start off with a brief word of prayer, and then we're going to go to a musical selection. Let us look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come once again thanking you for your grace and thanking you for your mercy, Lord. We ask that as this time, as we come together, that you would open our heart and that you would open our ears to receive your word on tonight, Lord God, and then may it fall on fertile ground that we not only be hearers of the word, but that we also be doers of the word, Lord. We ask that you let your spirit move through the televisions and the technological devices, Lord God, so we might experience a personal moment with you. We ask that you continue to bless our pastors and whatever they're doing at this moment, Lord. Continue to use them in kingdom building and bless them beyond measure. We thank you on tonight, Lord God, and ask that you would heal, set free, and deliver and educate us, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus we pray and say amen. We give the Lord all the praise, all the glory. But these last couple of months have been tough. But he's brought us through every test and every trial. And for this, we serve him for the rest of our lives. Oh. All of my life, I've never known you say. You remain the same. You remain the same. And wonderful. Wonderful you should make all. all of my life, I've never known you fail. You remain the same. Wonderful is your name. All of my life. All of my life. I never know you fail. You remain. You remain the same. Wonderful. Wonderful is your name. Wonderful. Wonderful is your name. Come on, sing it. You woke me up this morning. You woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. Put food on my table. Put food on my table. And brought joy to my day. I'm glad. I'm glad. Your love has never changed. And wonderful. And wonderful. And wonderful. 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 Is your name. Wonderful is your name. Wonderful is your name. All of my life, I've never known you fail. You remain the same. Wonderful is your name. All of my life, I've never known you fail. You remain the same. And we call you wonderful. Wonderful is your name. All my life. Yeah. 
You woke me up. You woke me up this morning. Started me. Started me on my way. Put food on my table. Food on my table. Brought joy. Brought joy to my day. I'm glad. I'm glad. You're nothing to share. And wonderful. And wonderful. Wonderful. And wonderful. We think wonderful. And wonderful. Wonderful is your name. And on it as you sing with us this morning, we give him all the praise for bringing us through, for bringing us out, and we serve you forever for the rest, for the rest of my life. I'll serve him, I'll serve him for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life. Oh, oh, come on, help us sing it out there. For the rest of my life, I'll serve him. For the rest of my life, for the rest of my life. anointed selection. All right, let's jump right into it. Grab your Bibles or your electronic devices and meet me over in Matthew chapter 6 verses 25 through 34. And I'm going to be going through several passages of scripture, so I'm just going to ask multimedia to follow me along with this main scripture and then the other ones you'll have to take notes to catch them. All right. Starting at verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whitherwall shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And our focal scripture is going to be in verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now this happens to be one of my favorite scriptures. So on tonight we're going to talk about first things first. We're going to talk about prioritizing, first things first. 
And so tonight we're going to have kind of a wellness exam. You know how it is when you get your annual physical. It's a wellness exam. It's preventative care. You're focusing on maintaining the wellness and stopping health problems before, before they occur. So you, instead of waiting until you have a health issue, you visit your physician to make sure that you're still in good health. That's a wellness exam. So tonight we're going to have a spiritual wellness exam on where we are with setting our priorities, on setting our priorities. Many of us find ourselves in the midst of being overwhelmed, overextended, overloaded, and sometimes saying to ourselves, where did the time go? There are not enough hours in the day. I had 20 things on my to-do list and only made it through 12. Well, you're not alone on this evening, my brothers and sisters. Many of us feel that same thing. We're so busy and our lives are so full that there's barely time for anything else. We have work, we have to raise kids, we have to chauffeur those kids around to the various activities. We have meetings, we have deadlines, we have to cook, we have to shop, we have to go to school, we have to be a caregiver, we have to be a loving spouse, we have to check in with our friends and family, we have to solve other people's crises, we have to attend events we may or may not be interested in, and the list goes on. No wonder why we need an electronic calendar or an app to track everything because it's just so much and sometimes it's just too much. Now just as we said there are physical requirements for good health when we get our annual wellness exam, there are also requirements for our spiritual wellness. So we're gonna to learn to put first things first because if you want the power and the presence of God, then you need to prioritize it. Somebody say prioritize. Around your most important priorities, it is living and being driven by the principles that you value the most. Now, as we read through the written word of God, we can see the priorities that God has established for our life. Random House Dictionary defines a priority as the right to precede others in order, rank, or privilege. To prioritize means to arrange or do in order of priority, or to give a high priority, priority to something. It is the arrangement of activities or items in order of importance. So we need to recognize the priority that God wants in our life. As it relates to us spiritually, it refers to the importance of the actions that are necessary for us to maintain our spiritual wellness. And so in our text on tonight, we are talking about seeking God first. Let's talk a little bit about Matthew, the writer of this text and his theology. Matthew expresses his faith through the language of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. The people for whom Matthew wrote at that time, they used this kingdom language as an integral part of their everyday secular world and had long been accustomed to its use in meaningful religious sense. In fact, Matthew uses kingdom language more than any other New Testament author. For Matthew, he used the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven interchangeably, and it means to reign or rule, or God's reign, the sovereign power of God functioning as king. Now, these passages of scripture are part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. It's a sermon that Jesus gave in Matthew chapters 5 through chapter 7. It's the, re the reason it's known as the Sermon on the Mount is because the scripture tells us that now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. Some even consider the Sermon on the Mount the most famous sermon Jesus ever gave. In his Sermon on the Mount, Christ taught some of the most meaningful principles of Christian living in the entire Bible. And one of these is our text on tonight. 
But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. The verse on, not only summarizes the first two priorities, focusing on God and his righteousness, but it brings to our attention the importance of the kingdom of God. And so the kingdom of God is the perfect and the just government of God that will be established over the earth at the return of Christ when the kingdoms of the world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. That's in the book of Revelation. But Matthew is also talking about God's kingdom here on the earth that God has a way of doing things, that God is the ruler of the kingdom of God. And all of us who consider ourselves followers and believers of Christ and confess him as Lord, that we are part of that kingdom. And if you are not, then he believes you are part of another kingdom. So in this particular text, God is teaching his disciples and some followers this entire passage of scripture illustrates a point that Jesus was trying to convey to his disciples about not worrying. He says, there are some things you hold in high regard, I'm paraphrasing, like having money and having shelter and having clothing. Yes, those things are important, but they are not the most important things you need to be concerned about. Because then in verse 33 again, he tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, these things that we hold in priority, these things that we deem that are necessary, that we say they're important, those things that we worry about, those things will be added unto us as we first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This directive to seek is to be ruled by God. Not only that we've entered into a sacred relationship with him, but we are to seek to submit our entire lives wholly to God as he is the king over us, to seek his rule and his authority. It is also a command to seek to be ruled by God. So when we're talking about seeking Seeking means to go after, to aim for. And so we as Christians are to aim for God's way of doing things. We're to aim for his righteousness. We're to aim for what he has for us, what he's defined in his word. And so as Christians, we have to spend time in his word so that we will know how we should respond to our day-to-day -day living. In Philippians 2, it says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Righteousness through the work of Jesus Christ. That means God judges us through whether or not we put our trust in Jesus Christ. And if we do, then we are justified and then we are considered righteous through the work of Jesus Christ from what he did on the cross. Therefore, we are considered righteous. But this righteousness doesn't come without a cost because of what Jesus did. And because we're righteous, the Lord expects us to live a righteous life, which means we're to live right. We're to make right decisions. We're to treat people right. We're to crave justice. We're to seek out justice for others. Okay, so... The primary meaning here is not that God acts, but that the disciples act in doing the will of God. So it's not, this scripture is not intended necessarily chronologically as though the disciples are free to, to pursue material goods after they seek the kingdom, but it means that they are to seek God's kingdom above all else. The disciples can have only one first priority, God's kingdom or will. Because anything you put before that automatically moves God out of first place. Now, before you say he was talking to the disciples, so it doesn't apply to me, we are all disciples. All of us who confess Jesus as Lord, we are disciples, and God has commanded us to make disciples. So we are also responsible for putting God first 
and seeking the kingdom of God. So God is telling us that we need to seek with earnest determination his kingdom. It means that his rule, his current place of authority, which is over this kingdom and over our lives. And so when we do that, if we live up to his expectations, his will, his morals, we become a mirror of the sovereign's glory. So we become a mirror of God's glory if we seek the kingdom first and we truly and earnestly put him first. So what this is telling us is that all that we do, we should consult it and submit it to the Lord. All things that we do should be done with a godly intention and should glorify the Father, should be done for his glory. So in our actions, in our mortality, in the way we treat people, all of this should be done to God's glory. So we need to ask ourselves, is this action lining up with what God would have for me? Is it lining up with the lifestyle God wants me to live? And that can't be determined outwardly because it can only be determined by what's in your heart. So it doesn't matter what you're doing if you're doing it with the wrong intentions. Righteousness, again, is God's way of doing things and doing it right. So this isn't the standard that the world sets, but it's the standard that God sets. Because we know that God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So until we come into the knowledge of Christ and learn his word, we think that his ways are like the world's ways, but they're not. Usually they're the opposite. Love your enemy. It's better to give than to receive. Opposite of what we're taught until we come into the knowledge of Christ. Okay, so on tonight, since this is a wellness exam, a spiritual wellness exam, I'm going to ask you a few questions, just like they do when you go in for your physical wellness exam. And then I want you to think about the answers truthfully, because just like when you get a physical exam, you have to answer the doctor truthfully, and you have to tell him what's going on. So as I ask you these questions, I want you to really think about where you are when you talk about setting priorities and putting God first. Now be honest with your answers. So the first question for you to ponder is, do you give God the first place in your heart? The Bible says, love the Lord God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your spirit. God doesn't want us to place anything before him. His desire is that we worship him and him alone. He must come first in our lives. If our love to God is not full of our heart, mind, strength, and soul, then it might be an incomplete or divided love. Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. The psalmist said in Psalm 63, 1, do you feel like that about God? Do you long for him? Does your soul thirst for him? In this verse, we see David is in love with God in his spirit, his mind, his body, and he has placed God above everything and everyone in his life. Do you do that? The prescription for that is that we need to give God his rightful place in our life. The second question for you to ponder, in your decision making, do you give God the first consideration? Mm -mm -mm. Let me say that one again. In your decision making, do you give God the first consideration? In every situation of our lives, we end up making decisions, whether they're good, bad, or ugly. And most of our decisions are made based on our feelings, our emotions or our desires, if we're being honest. But when you pr prioritize God, you make decisions based on his will for us. David asked the Lord, should I go out to fight the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord replied to David, yes, go ahead. I will certainly hand them over to you. 
David was a warrior. He was a champion. We see David often inquired the Lord before he made any decision. He wasn't perfect. We all know about Bathsheba. We know he didn't do everything perfectly, but his desire was to inquire, to seek the Lord for his guidance whenever he had to make a decision. That's, I'm, I'm saying ouch on that one because I know that I make a lot of decisions based out of emotions and desires. I see something, I may figure out how I can get it. I don't ask God first, do you even want me to have that God? Do you even want me to go there, God? Do you even want me to do that, God? We have got to get to the point where we are seeking God's guidance when we are making decisions. When it comes to important decisions, whose will usually takes priority in your life? Is it your self-will or is it the will of God? The good news is that God always gives us another chance. So even with the next decision that you make, seek God. God already knows the answer. He already knows what's down the road and around the corner. So ask him before you make that decision, before you make that commitment, seek God. That's one of the ways that you honor him. You seek him in your decision making. The next question for you to ponder when we talk about making God a priority, the number one priority is, do you give God the first hour of the day? Every day is a gift from God, and the way we love and honor God is our gift back to him. It's important that you start your day with him, that you seek him before you seek anything else or anyone else. The word says in Psalms 5.3, listen to my voice in the morning. Lord, each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. The psalmist sought the Lord every morning. Even the Lord Jesus spent time with God before meeting with anyone. We should also give God the first hour of our day. We should give that to the Lord. I know some of you are saying, well, I'm not a morning person. I work early. I, I can't do it first thing in the morning. Well, this isn't a fast and hard rule. What it's saying is carve out time. Be intentional about the time. Do it consistently. Do it every day. Set aside time. Lock everything and everybody else out and spend time in God's presence. Spend time worshiping God, spend time reading your word, spend time on your face, just in his presence, basking in his glory, thanking him for his goodness and his mercy, and then spend time reading his word again. God gave us his word so that we would know him. So spend time in your word. Don't let the busyness of life keep you from spending time with God and making him the priority of your day. The next question I want you to ponder, do you give God the first day of the week? Now we consider Sunday to be the first day of week and, and others may consider another day, but we consider Sunday as the day of the Lord. And the Bible tells us to remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, and that's in Exodus 20, chapter 8. It is the command, and it needs to be obeyed. When you give that day that belongs to him, you are honoring God, and you are prioritizing him. Now, we consider the Sabbath also a day of rest. When you start your day by resting in him, he will lead you through the remainder of the week. So our prescription there is let's give God his day. Now, this one may be a little tough for some people, but do you give God the first portion of all your income? Mm, 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 mm. Every blessing you have received is a gift from God, and you prioritize God by giving him the first portion of those blessings. The word says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. 
If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open up the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. I know there's been some controversy recently on whether God requires us to tithe or not. But for me, it works. I believe God, I tithe, and God pours out that blessing. He is faithful and true to his word. And God knew me. He needed to give me an amount to start at, or else I would have been keeping more for myself. So the tithe works for me, and I will continue to bring my tithes and offering into the storehouse and believe God that he will open up the windows of heaven. Might not be financially, but he will pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive it. Give God your best when you give your offerings. He says he loves a cheerful giver. That's another way that we prioritize God. We bring our tithes and our offerings into the storehouse so that we can advance the kingdom of God. Amen? And the next question I want you to ponder is, is God first in your life? Don't tell me God is first in your life and you don't spend time in prayer. How much time do you spend in prayer with God? Mm. You have time for everything else, but you don't have time for prayer. If Christ is your life, you will make time for him in prayer. It should be a priority in your life. When you pray, you do it with his glory in mind, not just your selfish desires, because we've allowed our lives and the busyness of our lives to crowd in our schedule to the point that our prayers have become selfish. They're all about us, all about what I want, all about what my family wants. And that's not just what prayer should be about. Yes, God tells us to make our requests known, but prayer should be about worship of God. Prayer should be about others. Prayer should be about advancing the kingdom. Prayer should be about what's going on in the world. Prayer should be about salvation, advancing the kingdom. Prayer should be more than about us, and it should be more than that five-minute popcorn prayer we pray in the morning or that five-minute popcorn prayer we pray at night because we're too tired and too exhausted from all the things we've done in the day. You must, must, I cannot emphasize it enough, you must spend time with God in prayer, a long time with him and getting to know him. That's how you get to know God. You spend time in prayer. You pray, you listen, you read God's words. When you have a passion for the Lord, it will be seen in your prayer life. Do you take the time on a daily basis? Are you seeking a separate place every day to be alone with the Father, to be with God every day? Now, some of you may be watching and you may feel as if you're exempt from this wellness exam because You're praying, you're seeking God, you're worshiping God, you're tithing, you're coming into the storehouse, you're on committees, you're in the choir, you're on the women's season committee, you're you're here when the church opens, you attend everything, you support everything, and you think, I have this thing down. But I got something for you too. The Bible tells the story of two sisters, Mary and Martha, who were loyal friends of Jesus Christ. When Christ visited them, they wanted to serve him in the way that each considered was most important. The story says, a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house, and she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me with an attitude. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, 
which will not be taken away from her. Serving others is highly commended in the Bible, and it is certainly not wrong to serve. We are to serve God's people. But in this instance, priorities were an issue. Listening to Christ's teachings was even more important than the food preparation at that time. Mm -mm -mm. So some of us are too busy. We're too busy. And even though we're busy doing the things of God, it keeps us, it distracts us from spending that quiet and that alone time with God that time where we need to get to know him more. There is always more of God to discover, always more of God to learn. And so when we're busy, busy all the time, we don't have that time with God so that he can speak to us, so that he can pour into us, so that he can give us direction, so that he can correct us, so that he can guide us into our divine destinies. So busyness can be a distraction. No professing Christian, right, would ever say that God is not first in our life. But what does our life say? You might say that God is first, but what is your life saying? Matthew 15, 8 says, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me giving God lip service, not actually making him a priority in your life, not actually spending time in his word, not actually spending time in prayer, not actually serving. Maybe you come to church or maybe you log in on Sunday and you check the box, but God is saying your heart is far from me. I need you to spend time with me. I need you to spend time in prayer. I need you to prioritize me. I need to be first in your life. Then Revelation 2 and 4 says, but I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Many of us know, and I'm, I'm one of them, you know, when you first get saved, you're on fire for the Lord. Everything is Jesus, Jesus, God, God. You're attending things and you're spending time in your word. You're getting to know God. And then life happens. And slowly but surely, you can fall away from that first love you had with him, that time you spent with him, how you wanted to please him, how you wanted him to be pleased with you. And he says, I have something against you if you find yourself in that position right now. But again, the good news is God always gives us another chance another chance to prioritize him, another chance to sit at his feet and be in his presence. Because he's a gracious and a merciful God, he does that for us. Now I know that setting priorities can be difficult and keeping them even more so, but we have to seek God's kingdom, God's way of doing things, find out what God's purpose is for our life and to do that, we're gonna to have to prioritize. And so some of the things we need to look at when we prioritize that we may be able, able to eliminate or we may be able to cut down on them. Because our daily activities, they consume all of our time and energy and we have to find a way to fit God in. He has to be a priority because the reality is, and if truth be told, we find time to do everything else that we wanna do. Mm-hmm. How about all those people that, that scraped the money together to go see Beyonce? Mm-hmm. You made time and you got money to do that. Mm. We make time for what we want to do. If you want to be physically fit, mm, you make time to go to the gym. Yes, you do. If you want to get an increase in your salary and you need a degree or training, you make time for that. And God is saying to us that those things are fine but you need to prioritize me first. I need to be the first priority so then we can see if those are the things that you need to be doing in your life. Now, some of the areas that we need to consider when we're talking about managing our time and prioritizing God, mm -mm -mm. this one right here, right here, right here. Ooh, Lord, I'm about to get on the altar. 
television. Cut out some of that television watching. Lord have mercy. Studies say that the average person wastes, not spends, but wastes between 15 and 40 hours a week watching TV and oftentimes worldly programs that consumes vast amounts of our time. And some of that stuff we're watching affects, negatively affects our spirit. Mm. Oh, Lord, you, you hurt me with that one, Lord. Sleeping. Now, we know we have to eat. We know we have to sleep. We need that for our health, because if we're not taking care of ourselves, then how can we serve as God has called us to do? But some of us are sleeping too much. Mm -hmm. Some of us are sleeping too much. If you are getting more than nine hours of sleep, yeah, you, you could afford to spend some time waking up a little early and spending time with God. Working, people have to work. We know people have to work, but sometimes we make the job our God and we prioritize that above any and everything. We need to evaluate whether we can work fewer hours and still provide for our needs because God has said that if you prioritize me first, I'll make sure you have what you need. Not everything you want, everything is not gonna be perfect, but I will see that you have what you need if you prioritize me first. Sports, mm, mm, mm. This, this one's not my thing, but I know plenty of people who spend a lot of time watching sports and a lot of time playing sports. Can we cut down on that some so that we can spend more time developing our spiritual life? Social media, this one is not my thing. Social media, let me tell you, I logged into uh, Facebook one day and I started scrolling and scrolling and I was into the cyber abyss and I looked up and two hours had gone by. Just wasted like that. How much time do you spend on social media versus how much time you spend in God's word? in God's presence, in prayer, in study. How much time? Not saying that you can't be on social media. I know some of you, 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 you market through social media. Some of you, you're evangelizing through social media. But how many of you are just scrolling through social media all day, all night, and you look up and you've spent hours? Again, we're doing a, a wellness check here, a spiritual wellness check. So think about these things and think about how you can make some changes in your life so that God becomes the priority. Entertainment. You know, as adults, we spend so much time in entertaining activities, and some of them have no little or no spiritual benefit. Now, there is a legitimate place for entertainment and for recreation, but we have to be on guard against negative entertainment that can lead us astray and waste our time. What, we try, what we're trying to do is keep in mind the priorities as we go through our day. We wanna make choices in light of those priorities. And our first priority is what? As Christians, our first priority is seeking God seeking his ways, seeking his will for our life, reading his word, spending time in prayer, getting to know him. We have to be careful because there are so many enticements and so many distractions in the world that will change our priorities. Anybody ever have prioritized that I'm gonna spend time in my word, I'm gonna spend time with God and something comes up? Somebody offers you something. Somebody suggests that you go somewhere. Somebody pulls you away. There are so many things and so many enticements. That, again, the phone, the, the, the television, so many enticements that pull you away from your commitment. You need to be in prayer that God doesn't allow you to be enticed and to be tempted away, that you might fulfill your commitment before God and that you might use your time well. You have to look for practical ways to implement your priorities, even when you're doing necessary activities. For example, you can listen to recorded teachings 
Or you could pray or sing during your commute time. You may be able to use your lunch time to read your word while you're eating. You can listen to teachings and you can meditate on scripture, which God tells us to meditate on our scriptures day and night. You can listen to scripture, gospel songs, the word during your exercise time, when you go walking with your family or your friends or your spouse. You can also listen to gospel music. You can listen to a word. You can have a discussion about the goodness of God. But try to find ways where you can incorporate prioritizing God into your life. We have to do that. We are called by God to do this. Here are some of the scriptures that tell us how God feels about prioritizing him. We went over seeking God and his kingdom first. We went over you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Your love for Jesus. The word says, Matthew 10, 37, he who loves father or mother more than me, this is Jesus, is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. In other words, I am to come first. Spiritual things in heaven. The word says, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above and not on the things that are on earth, the things that are temporal. Only what you do for Christ will last. That's what the word tells us. Love, above all, keep fervent in your love for one another. We know that's what Christ said when asked what were the two greatest commandments, that we are to love him above everything else. We talked about that. We are to love him with our heart, mind, soul, and spirit. And then we're to love our neighbor as ourself. So above all, we are to love one another, and that prioritizes God in our lives. For eternal things, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And the word tells us and instructs us that we should be laying up treasure, heavenly treasure, for those eternal things and not the things that rust and moth and that will decay. Those are temporal. Now, you may be able to find other scriptures, but these show what our priorities should be. These are definitely, definitely different from the kind of priorities that the people in the world have. Our priorities are to be different. If we really put Jesus first in our life, if we exalt God above everyone else, if we consistently seek first the kingdom of God, and if we strive for love and every other spiritual fruit, then our life will reveal this perspective. Our life will give clear evidence that our perspective on life is radically different from those around us who don't know Christ. We will walk in Christ's likeness and order our life according to God's word. My brothers and my sisters, I know setting priorities is not simple. Again, as we said, keeping them not simple, but we have to be committed, committed to putting God first in our lives. He promised us, if you do that, I'm going to take care of your needs. There should be nothing more important to a child of God, to a Christian, to those who profess Jesus as Lord, than making him a priority in our lives. Because when you do that, there is a change. There is a change in the way you think. There is a change in the way you act. There should be a visible change from what people used to see. Now, we do have cases where we can profess that we put Christ first, but it's not so. You've been the same way, having the same issues, the same nasty attitude, the same issues that go against God's teachings for the last 10 or 20 years. Yes, you are saved. Yes, you profess to love Christ, 
but your life is not showing that. We never get to the point where we're so full and we've reached a place in Christ where there isn't room for change because we'll never get it perfect. And God doesn't call us to get it perfect. He calls us to what? To seek, to aim for it, to try to reach that goal. That's what pleases God, that you are seeking him first, that you are trying. Will you fail sometimes? Yes, you will. But as we talked about it, our God is gracious. He is merciful. He is kind. He gives us another chance. He understands. He was a man who's God and a God who is man. So he understands the frailties of being human. And so I just want to encourage you on today. Spend time with God. From time to time, perform this wellness check, this spiritual wellness check. Perform it yourself. Talk to God about it. Ask him where you are on the spectrum. Where's your relationship with God? Where, are you, where do you fall? Where does God fall in your priorities? This should make you, it's one of those things that should make you say, hmm, I need to reconsider some things. I need to do some things differently. I need to make sure that I am incorporating God and more into my day-to-day -day living so that I'm not just a hearer of the word, but that I'm a doer and that people can see from my evidence, from my fruit, that yeah, this person really does love God. This person really does put God first in their lives. I encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, to do that so that God can be pleased. Who doesn't want to please their parent? God is our father. We want to please him. We want him to look upon his children and say, well done. How different the world would be if we all seriously and earnestly prioritize God first in our lives, that we are seeking him, doing things his way, fulfilling his will and his divine destiny for our lives. Oh, how much different the world could be. So my brothers and sisters, I just ask you again on tonight, consider all that we've discussed on tonight. See if there's some changes you need to make. Go over what your priority is. What, what is your priority? Is your priority having fun? Is your priority making more money? Is your priority your career? Again, nothing wrong with wanting those things, but they shouldn't be at the top of your list. Nothing should come before God. Absolutely nothing should come before God. Amen? Amen. My brothers and my sisters, on tonight, we want to open up the doors of the church, and we want to ask if there's anyone out there who is watching, anyone out there who has been listening, and in order for you to prioritize God, you have to know him as Lord and Savior first. You have to be saved first, and so tonight, we offer Christ to you. If you want the promises of God, if you want the benefits from knowing God, from being his child, that as you seek him, he will provide what you need. Then the doors of the church are open and we ask that you give your heart, give your life to Christ. You can go online, you'll see it scrolling across the screen and you can submit your information and someone will be in contact with you and we will celebrate you. And we want you to come into the fold so that you can grow in Christ with us. There may be someone on tonight You've strayed away from God. You feel like he's at the bottom of your priority list and you want him to be number one on your priority list again. And you want to rededicate your faith. This is the time. God is speaking to you. Put me back in my rightful place first in your life. You too, submit your information and we'll be in contact and in prayer with you. And then if there's someone out there who doesn't have a church home, we invite you to be a part of Ebenezer AME Church. Our pastors, the Reverend Dr. Granger Browning and the Reverend Dr. Joanne Browning, would love to have you come in and be a part of this church family. We would love to have you here. 
So you also put your information in and someone will be in contact with you. Again, we invite you to come out to our services at nine o'clock a.m. on Sunday, or you can watch online. The Holy Ghost rules and reigns here and we have a marvelous time in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Won't you come on and give God some praise because it is time to give. And here at Ebenezer, we get excited when it's time to give because we understand that giving is a part of the worship service. And we also understand God's principle of sowing and reaping. So we ask that on tonight that you would give with a servant's heart. God says he loves a cheerful giver. So we ask that you give, that you plant seeds into this fertile soil. The instructions are on the screen on all the ways that you can give. You can give electronically through Give a Fly. You can also text to give. You can go online and you can give through PayPal, all the ways to give. And if you're especially savvy, you can use the QR code to give. But we just ask that you would give generously and that you would give abundantly. And this can be one of those things you pray about. God, what would you have me to give? on tonight. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to go to God in a closing word of prayer. Let us look to the Lord. Oh, Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We come first of all apologizing, Lord God, for not making you first in our lives, for not making you the priority of our life every day. And now, Lord, we ask that you would give us the strength, that you would give us the heart, to seek you first, Lord God. You know that it can be difficult with the busyness of life, but we ask that you would help us to prioritize you, Lord God, so that we can spend time with you, so that we can do it your way, so we can fulfill your will, Lord God, that you might be pleased with us. So Lord, we believe in faith that through the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord, that this shall be done. Search us, Lord God. Refresh our hearts, Lord God. Remove anything, Lord God, that hinders us. Remove any distractions that keep us from putting you first, Lord. We ask your blessings upon our pastors that you will continue to bless them and use them in kingdom building, Lord. We ask for your blessing upon the church universal, Lord. We ask you to continue to use us to be a witness in a dying world that they might know that you live, Lord. So it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and we say amen. Good night. Have a blessed week. Stay online for a minute for any announcements, and we'll see you next week. God bless you. Calling all children and youth. Vacation Bible School for young people ages 2 to 18 will be held in person at Ebenezer starting Monday, June 26th through Friday, June 30th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. each day. There will be fun Bible lessons, crafts, snacks, and outdoor fun, and it's all fun. Free registration is required and volunteers are also needed. Community service hours are also available. To pre-register your child or sign up to volunteer, please email vacationbibleschool at ebenezerame.org. Let's celebrate the close of another successful school year at the Children and Youth Ministries End of School Year Block Party, Saturday, June 24th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. right here on the grounds of Ebenezer. There will be food, games, and other activities. Then we'll recognize students from first to 12th grade with a cupcake and achievement certificate at our Cupcakes and Certificates event immediately following worship service on Sunday, June 25th. Advanced registration is required for both activities. To register, go to ebenezerame.org slash youth.